All right, hello everybody. Today we're going to take a look at congruent triangles. Now I know we've already talked in depth about congruent statements, but I did want to go over a problem um, or an example problem on some additional ways that we can use congruence to our advantage to locate uh, missing information. So the first thing that's always really, really important is that you do take note of the congruent statement and how it relates to the picture you're given. The two triangles will not always necessarily be um, laid out on the paper in the exact way that they correspond to each other. So for example, A, B, C would mean that that is the order that it needs to relate to the secondary triangle D, E, F. So in this case, side A, B, which is this side right here, is congruent to side D, E, because those are the first two letters in the congruent statement. Side B, C which is the bottom of this top triangle, is congruent to EF, which is the right-hand side of this lower triangle. And lastly, AC, first and last letter, is congruent to DF, which is the first and last letter as well. So AC, and we will put three lines there to be the third side, is congruent to DF, which is this third side. So keep in mind, it looks like the bottom triangle, DEF, is rotated uh, a little bit in comparison to triangle ABC. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at these items. So the first question is to find AB. So that means what is the length from A to B? We don't have any side length information given to us on the first triangle. However, on our second triangle, we are told that DE is 12. Well, if we look in our congruent statement, segment DE is congruent to segment AB. What that means is that whatever length DE is, it is equal to AB. In this case, we know that DE is equal to 12, which that means AB is also equal to 12. So you can always fill that in in your picture. The second question is to find the value of X. If we see where X appears in our figure, it's right here at angle C. So what we're saying is the measure of angle C is equal to the expression x plus 30. Now if we look at our congruent statement, C is the third letter, which means representing the third angle, but that means it would correspond to the third letter, letter of the second triangle congruence part of, the, uh, part of the congruent statement. So angle C and angle F are congruent. That would mean that angle C matches angle F. They're the exact same size. Now the measure of angle F is equal to 48 degrees. Now because we've already said that C and F are equal, we know that their angle measures are equal. So we can say the measure of angle C is equal to the measure of angle F. Now using substitution, we know that the measure of angle C is X plus 30. And we know that the measure of angle F is 48 degrees. So to solve for X, all we would have to do is an algebra problem here and subtract 30 from both sides. And in that case, after simplifying, we find that X is actually equal to 18. So when we're asked to find the value of X that equals 18, we also know by congruence that angle C, the measure of angle C, in total is 48 degrees. You can either find that by comparing it to angle F, which is also 48 degrees, or you could say 18 plus 30, which again is 48 degrees. Please let me know if you need any more help.